In the year 2000, world leaders promised to free people from extreme poverty and social ills. Zambia was part of this effort. The Millennium Declaration and the Millennium Development Goals were born. Today, Zambia is one of the African countries striving to become a prosperous middle-income nation by 2030 through high levels of economic growth and improved human development. Zambia is rich in natural resources and home to over 13 million people, half of whom are young under the age of 18. It is a country with 73 tribes speaking over 70 different local languages. This is a country that has not been at war or had major internal or external conflict. Zambia and the other 192 United Nations member countries are accelerating their efforts to achieve what they had promised 13 years ago, to realize the Millennium Development Goals, or the MDGs as they are known, by 2015. However, as we approach the finish line of 2015, Zambia has joined the world community to also look ahead beyond 2015 and ask people what they see after in order to shape the future we want. Lift up your voice and sing. Speak out. Uh -huh. What does a post-2015 development vision and agenda hold for Zambia? What kind of future do we as Zambians want to see and be a part of? To articulate this vision and capture the aspirations of young and old, men and women, rich and poor, those most vulnerable and those who are often less heard, the UN Development Group launched global consultations at the end of 2012 in 100 countries. The national dialogues on the future we want began in Zambia in early 2013 and have been held across all provinces. Community conversations, discussions on national TV and radio, public town hall meetings and engagement on various social media platforms have seen the dialogue spread. The aim was indeed to reach as many Zambians as possible and to hear what they want for the future and that for their country. These responses will help world leaders come together again and convey a bold vision and direction for a common global development agenda for all. And empower the woman if you protect her rights in these times, don't you know? Speak up! Because no voice is too big or too small, break the silence and let me hear you answer the call. In Zambia, 38 mothers die every month due to pregnancy-related complications. Three Zambians, two of whom are young women, continue to get infected with HIV every hour. Too many children still don't complete secondary education, and those that do may not be ready for a changing labor market. 90% of working Zambians remain in the informal sector, where they have little job security, are often underpaid, and with little social protection. And many caught in these inequalities are women. What can we do? Do you think there's more that we can do? as youths to help um, the country achieve these MDGs? There's a lot we can do as youths. And one of the main reasons and the main factor that a youth out there should stand out and mainly focus on is getting a good education. Because when you're educated, you avoid most of these MDGs, let's say um, poverty. You get to avoid poverty because you are educated and you know exactly what you want in life. But why? Recording artist Danny Kaya traveled to Luapula to be a part of the dialogue and also to inspire fellow Zambians to contribute to this process of voicing one's views and shaping the goals beyond 2015. In my 14 years of music, I had never taken any social responsibility. So I thought it right that this could be an opportunity to do that. And uh, secondly, I looked at, um, I'm a growing man with two kids. And it would just be right that I also prepare a future, a good future for my kids. So being part of that, I thought, would really shape a good foundation for them. What does the future hold for people, whether in the urban centers of Lusaka or in the Copper Belt? And what about hearing from those in one of the rural and poorest corners of Zambia, Luapula? How would people in Luapula, many of whom represent the over 40% of Zambians living in extreme poverty, secure a more prosperous and healthy future? It is exciting that Zambia has achieved 94% of primary school enrollment rate. We are proud of this achievement. Now we have to ensure that these children go on to complete a quality secondary education. When 100 children are put into a classroom or if teachers are absent, and when there is little in the science labs, even those who continue get a very poor quality education. 
These are the young leaders of tomorrow, and yet, will they be well prepared for a competitive world and be able to take their country to greater heights? Ending child marriages and teen pregnancies is a big social issue that Zambia faces. Many young girls cannot lead healthy and productive lives because they are pulled out of school and are married off at a young age of 12 or 13 and are then vulnerable child mothers, often also facing domestic violence. Government and traditional leaders have come together with members of their communities to agree that such practices have to end. It will not be easy, but we can protect what's best and rich in our cultures and traditions and change what causes hurt and holds us back. In a post-2015 agenda, our priorities must address such social injustices and discriminations head on, and we must have the courage to bring about change. Danny met with Chantel, who was one of the young women at these dialogues. She explained how important it is to invest more in taking care of women and children's health. Um, for me, um, why MDG number no. 5 is uh, like a big issue, it's because it has really affected my family, especially my sister. In 2010, I gave birth on the 16th of March and uh, to a premature baby, seven months premature, and the facilities that were there to facilitate for the premature baby were quite poor. We had an improvised incubator, which was um, uh, like they made wood and then put glasses by the sides and on top. And then inside, just underneath, there was a light, a, bulb, a light bulb and a plate of water so that it can be moving the heat around the box. And that was the only one which was there. So most of the kids that were being born premature, even those that were born okay, at the right time, but still were not born healthy. They were also being put in the same incubator. So at that time, when I gave birth, there were about four children in the same incubator. So it's because they are premature, most of them, they are very, their immune is not yet strong. So they're prone to many diseases. So um, my child, she was, she survived for about a month and two weeks. It is stories like this that make us think and act if we are to make a difference to the lives of Chantel, her sister and baby, and so many like them. To save lives, we need working clinics with not just trained doctors and nurses, but roads, electricity and transport to get there in time. We have lived so long with infectious diseases, with HIV and TB with malaria, but we know these are preventable. Today, there is also an alarming rise in the numbers of Zambians dying of diabetes, cancers and heart attacks. The average life expectancy of a Zambian has not yet reached 50 years. This has to change if we are to do more than dream of, but actually live a future we want. For me, uh, if we're looking at post uh, 2015, we will need to start looking at the poverty landscape and everything that impacts it and understand the complexities that are associated with development. Health is one major, 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 major issue. We need to discuss decent sanitation. This comes up in both urban compounds and in rural areas. How can we expect a healthy and productive population when close to 70% of our people, that is about 8.8 .8 million, don't have a decent toilet and sewage facility? The government, our local leaders and communities have to step in and invest in improving basic decent sanitation for all. As engaged citizens, we must make our voices heard on where we want our budgets to be spent. Lift up your voice and sing. Speak out. Uh -huh. Traditional chiefs play a very important role in our communities. They are often seen as the standard bearers for setting priorities, mediating conflicts, making sure community lands and forests are protected, and that their people are safe. When they follow through on these responsibilities, ensure benefit sharing, and also help their communities to change with the times, we see how people and the land benefit. Our own government, if there could be some deliberate policy to say, 
they empower their own citizens. Let these people go into partnership with the foreign investors so that at the end of the day, our people will benefit. More so, we're looking to diversify the economy. We are predominantly a copper-based economy. But on a rainy day, if the copper market slumped on the international market or the prices went down, what would happen? Then we wouldn't have the income. So we're looking to diversify the economy beyond 2015 into agriculture and tourism. But all that comes in in line if we have proper skills that are trained at secondary school levels. Protecting our natural environment and all the rich resources it holds, whether water, forests, fish and wildlife, keeping the air clean, this is what will help us to sustain our human progress. This is what will ensure a better life for our children and their children to come. So we can and must protect and conserve our natural resources and create better livelihoods at the same time. These intentions are not at cross purposes. The more that our policy makers, our traditional chiefs, our communities and our private sector can support this approach, it is a win-win all around. I would like to see a diversity when uh, we're talking energy and also uh, I, would like us, I would like to see a society that embraces uh, renewable energy because this will obviously help us save money and this money can uh, thus be channeled to other, uh, to various sectors such as the health, the health sector of our country. Zambia's wealth of natural resources must also be protected, not only for Zambia's benefit, but for the Southern Africa region and for the world. We have a greater responsibility to protect our environment as global citizens, but we also must be supported by the rest of the world. Costs and benefits can be shared in a fair manner so it helps us to lead better lives. So what I'm looking for post-2015 is a for the politicians to think beyond their countries and think regional integration. I want the commissars, the SADC, the ECOWAS to actually work for the poor person. So I want to see an integrated Africa because trade is going to be promoted. Following that, I think we're going to see, you know, a lot more people taking full advantage. They protect our rights in these times, don't you know? Because no voice is too big or too small, break the silence. Celebrating and recognizing women's rights and empowerment is a key to a better future. We know that the more we invest in girls' and women's health and education, the more prosperous a family and a country is. In Zambia, like in many countries, women make up more than 50% of our population. Yet why are they not given the same opportunities, respect and freedoms as the men? We believe that as a country, Africa and the, the world over, the future must take the role of women as the centerpiece for our future development. I think Africa lags behind principally because the women have been left behind in leadership and we want a future where all of us especially the women, have equal access to resources. How dare you think another lady, another lady can take your place? I would love in this country for women to uh, be placed in, 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 in more leadership roles. Uh, even going as far as being president, we could have a woman president. I think women are more nurturing and are more caring than men sometimes. They've got their gifting, so I think Women should be part of the community's development and should take leadership roles. Zambia signed on to achieving the MDG targets and the AU and SADAC protocols that call for more equal participation of women in our formal economy and in political representation. Today, in Zambia, female representation is a mere 11%. In the short term, we have to look for special measures to correct these imbalances and in the longer term, it is a change in the mindset and behaviors and enhance opportunities for girls and women in education and jobs that could make the difference. How do we reach higher levels of human development and respect human rights when half of our population is left behind? That's why there's an emphasis now more on equity, you know, even over and above equality, because we're thinking the way that resources are redistributed in the economy should be able to benefit everyone and bring them to a level where there's justice, social justice and economic justice. But the future that I would want is also a future that uh, removes inequality mm -hmm. of all forms, both in terms of 
uh, poverty of the mind, material poverty, and also gender inequalities. And also that there be peace in the world, mm -hmm. and that our girls can have an environment where they can go to school freely and attain their right to education. At Zambia's independence, our first president, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, established Zambia's Independence Day to coincide with the UN Day, 24th October. Our nation was built on the universal values and principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter. Respect for the dignity and human rights of all people, justice and equality, self-determination of people in greater freedoms. Today, Zambia's 2030 development vision remains inspired by these fundamental principles and calls for more sustainable development and a maturing democracy and full respect for human rights. With better improved access to information, a higher quality education, and the opportunities to engage directly in development that will change our lives, this is what will make for more accountable and impactful development. This requires government, private sector, all parts of civil society. All citizens must be included and must be held responsible for the choices and the changes that will make the future we want. This is what will transform our world. This world belongs to us. Yeah, you and me. This day, it's the smallest seed that grows the biggest tree. It's our smallest axe that falls the biggest tree. So only chabi to grab it is a thing I change. My heart to tend to use it as a goal. My color to.